Well, everybody, in this video, I will talk about how I textured this whole asset. If you are curious how I designed it in 3 d Code, or it's my previous videos, please check it out. And this whole video is all about texturing a hyperlay asset inside 3 d Code. All right, so let's start with the grenade. First of all, what I need to do is I need to break the instancing on this model, just because and I don't need that guy as well. Uh, just because if we texture it with instancing on everything that you paint on one part is going to be replicated. It's kind of cool, but then if you bake ambient occlusion, it's going to be mixed up as well. Uh, so that's not cool. So to uninstance everything, I have to go into instance and, and hit uninstance all. And there's no other way to uninstance anything. You cannot just right click on a layer and do that. Uh, a little bit annoying, but that's how we do it. Okay, so my polygon is fairly high, it's 14 million. Uh, one thing I could do, I could go and decimate all of them. I, however, because I want to show how to texture on a high poly object, the higher the poly count, the higher quality of the texture you have. So while it's gonna be pretty slow on 14 million uh, triangles, especially when baking and such, it still gives you a much better result than you know, like painting on a 2 million uh, triangle mesh. Uh, however, yeah, f probably a good decision here could have been to just decimate down to 5 million, but I just don't want to spend time doing that. Uh, I don't mind waiting a little bit to, to bake stuff. Uh, so let's just s jump into paint room, hit on any of the materials. I will only be using scratch and dirt materials with maybe some kind of paints. I'm not going to overlay materials on top of the whole thing. It's uh, because I'll show you later, it gives you a lot of benefits if you, if you don't do that. Uh, and yeah, let's just hit on one of those materials and it's gonna give us this prompt. Uh, yep, let's do one calculated. It's gonna take like a couple of minutes to do that. All right, I'll back the ambient occlusion. If I turn it off, you will see the difference. And then I also need to bake curvature map. It's really important. So I'll just click on any other dot map and it will start baking uh, the curvature straight away. So it's already like uh, starting the baking process. That's why it's freezing out. And there goes the bake. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. All right, I baked the uh, curvature map. By default, it's hidden. If I turn it on, you will see it. And yeah, I mean, if you want to overlay it, that, the uh, traditional overlay doesn't really work if you don't have any materials in the layer palette. Uh, so if I hit overlay, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, yeah, nothing happened. So the only way to overlay it, if you want to overlay it, is to use the opacity slider and just make it play an opacity down to like 10%. I want like maybe a three percent if you need to, and it looks it looks fine. So I'll just put it down to mm, like it's roughness. I'll turn on that to to zero, and yeah, I'll put it in at five. I think. Okay. So when I pick it any of these dot maps right there, I can just start painting. And I've got symmetry on, so I've got um, radial symmetry. And I can just go and paint, paint, paint. And I don't really like it. Okay, I actually painted on the top of the couch map, so that's why I didn't like it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to paint it on top, just the regular layer. And when I paint it, you can see it's quite blurry. And the reason it's blurry is because I need to change the scale of the material. I will drag in that zoom icon, the icon there, so that's how I changed it. I mean, you can also have a smart material preview to see how it looks. It's gonna be pretty slow. Oh, it's actually faster than I think, but can be a little bit slow on these guys. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that preview, so I'll just go uh, do like brush, big brush strokes. 
you can also do like rectangular selection thing. For example, I can go and essentially just do this. It's gonna take a while to paint it across everything. But what I like about it, it's pretty cool. It's got the rectangular selection, like uh, or any kind of other selections, like splunge selection, lasso selection. Uh, and substance painter still doesn't have it. It's just pretty crazy that substance painter, that painter doesn't have it. Um, but yeah, it's quite beneficial. Obviously, applying it to the whole heavy mesh takes some time. Mm, so I'll give it a minute. All right, and got everything applied. So it's all kind of universally dirty. If if I want, for example, to clean up some dirt from well from this handle right here, what I can do is I can uh, hit A, pick that part, then sh hit Shift G. And it doesn't do much. All right, you can check those stuff uh, in actually in Sculpt menu. Visibility and ghosting, isolate. Ghosting is Shift G. And it doesn't want to do it here, which is a bit funny because I've done it before. Uh, while I was in painting mode. Uh, other way is just to isolate it as it is so it doesn't stand in the way, uh, all other parts don't stand in the way and then I can go and use the eraser tool and start erasing stuff around it's probably too active so I'll go and do it to like that much. I'm not sure why the glossiness is still on for the dirt, it looks so shiny. Uh, I need to... F uh, I can try with another material paint with it and see how it goes. I mean this particular one dust right doesn't want to do much but I'll come up with something eventually so I want to unhide all so comments are not working right now for a funny reason anyway so right now, if I pick any of those materials, I can actually switch it to some, something else. And so I've got a whole bunch of them here. S and that's... You can't actually do that, that easy if you already apply the material inside the paint room. S so that's why I only paint dirt on a high-poly object in the paint room and I don't pay anything else. And yeah, it took some research to understand how it works. And obviously, at any time, I can just construct a new shader. Construct new shader. Um, one, two, three. So name. And let's. And here we can just go and pick our color, whichever we want. Like let's go like a hockey type. All right, finish. Yeah, now we have it. So I, I didn't use any kind of options there, like use some cavity map and any such like that. We all have it inside paint room. So that's why there's no point. Uh, I was using actually this material there, but I will also this this type of a combination, like lead rubber. So it's quite a bit of fun just to go around and um, play around with the materials and see how they look. So we have one layer of dirt. I uh, usually add quite a few, just play around with different type of layering modes. Uh, I'll just call it dirt. But then I want to put some labels here, right? And decals. I've got a p 
pack of stencils that I've created. <clears throat> and yeah, it's using cube made painting from camera. Okay, sometimes it actually be funny, right? So the way it's projecting, usually I have it on the screen and it goes from camera. Sometimes it doesn't want to do it. So I kind of have to do this, like just a second guess, I'll turn off the symmetry. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Okay, it shows now. So, and these decals, I will later publish them. I'll do a separate video about, uh, I'll just, just give them for free. Uh, it'll be a little giveaway. Uh, okay, so this is the name of. Okay, okay I have to make my brush bigger to deal with that. Let's and it has done nothing. So opacity is good. Listen, that's good. Okay. Oh yeah. Um is that nothing because I had a dirt material on and it's only painting in the cavities. So I need to switch to a paint and go white paint. And don't really need symmetry. Though I need symmetry for <coughs> for that same number to sh the same label to show on the other side, but I need might need to show it from that side, yeah. And let's go back to stencils. Go into one of those, right? All right, I need to invert everything. Okay. So it's now been painted from uh, both sides and even more than that. We can see it went th th straight through the whole thing, which is annoying. So I will just hide everything around and unhide these bits and start painting, start doing the labels. And this is really all the basics for for the texturing process. So now I will turn on the time lapse and continue on painting and I'll talk over bits, uh, interesting bits. All right, so I want to do some stencils and what I found out essentially that I had to do, I had to switch cube mapping to mapping from a camera mapping. And that really allows you to do it properly. And though I think I've tried it just before, uh, it didn't work out right. But then I tried it again and it worked out. So I don't know. So you see here, I'm a little bit suffering trying to navigate using cube, ma cube mapping. And also see, because I got regular symmetry, everything that I stencil up in front gets kind of inverted on the back. So it's something that I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I didn't didn't bother me too much, but obviously can be a huge issue for somebody else because for me, it was just a concept that I, I wanted to look, uh, you know, like uh, military equipment, but I didn't want to spend too much time properly stenciling everything. Also, a cool thing about stencils, you can actually regulate the depth the depths of the stencil. So it, if you put the depth limit for like uh, zero, 
or you know, one, it's not going to go any further than that. So it's not going to go f across the whole mesh. And that's actually really cool that you can do that. It's pretty um, unique. And I like that in 3D code, you got this in interchangeable stuff that, you know, it, it applies both to like voxels or sculpting in these polygons and also applies to essentially um, uh, the texturing. And here I finally found that if, from, if I do it from camera, then I don't no longer have to suffer with cube mapping. <clears throat> and I can just project all those guys from here. And get those pattern numbers in. And uh, yep, stay guys tuned. This all the stencils will be available for free in a couple of weeks. So I'll just publish them on Gumroad, and they will be free because they they're pretty tiny. They're like a couple of megabytes. So Gumroad allows uh, to share small files for free, not the big ones. All right, few other labels. And I think I spent um, a couple hours doing this and I will be sharing the original PSD. So you, for example, you can go and change all the numbers or fonts on those numbers. So you can see that I had a stencil that has gone through the whole thing. So I, now I have to um, paint it out and actually was stenciled on a different layer, on a dot layer. That was pretty annoying. So I had to fix the dot layer by deleting everything, including the dot. Also, I've got the Shift G button. It's uh, like isolate ghosting. So if you press that, then uh, anything that you stencil out is uh, not going to be uh, stenciled across other uh, objects. But sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. So I have to go and uh, hide everything else from walk three menu sometimes and all that. So here I'm just uh, trying to figure out what to what to stamp. And I don't think that was the best choice with those circles. I did end up uh, deleting them all, <laughs> raising those circles um, at the end of the video. All right. And I was thinking about, again, I was thinking about some stencils, what to use here, maybe some logo or uh, this kind of fuse, and then uh, with with this material, it does act quite funky, and this is one of those rare material, few materials that uh, this particular paint material, whatever I project here, it doesn't. It looks super faint white. So in fact, if I wanted to make it um, like a solid white, I would have to duplicate the layers a few times, like three or four times, and that would be like overlay and overlay and overlay. Well, though I can see now that I'm uh, looking at the layer that I have, it, uh, the opacity is at 60%, but still I've tried with some other stuff. It's, it's not even about the opacity still. This particular material treats the anything that's painted on top slightly different. But uh, again, I decided just to go with the flow and I decided just to leave these labels as they are. So to get a better white uh, paint, you just need to create an another metallic material. You can see here I'm cycling through materials and if I apply like a bluish polymer, then it looks different. All right, so I just want now to paint at the bottom of the modules. I'll not paint that stamp the stencils. And I was thinking what should I put here? And I was like, okay, well, I've painted this explosion. So explosion does fit pretty well. I also, I had the circles, right? So I thought, okay, the circle is pretty good. And um, another circle. Then the explosion. 
and some meaningless numbers. Like that. GBT slash oh, dash two dash three sixteen. Whatever that means. And the binary code, yes. I really like the binary code, it makes makes it look real. And the circles were way too like uh, active, they were way too dominant, so I would paint them out uh, later. I will. And also was thinking, can I use those little windows, uh, no, one of other parts to put any kind of logos there as well? But uh, but no, I didn't. I decided not to go with it. I picked an alpha and decided to started to just raise raise it. And even blur it a little bit. And by the way, while I'm painting on this high poly object, you actually do have um possibility to bake it down to a low poly object. I will make a separate video about it, but this is pretty cool that you can bake the high poly texture down to a low poly object and you'll still retain all the lay layers, which you'll have still have the type uh, the labels layer, you have the dot layer. This is actually really crazy cool that you can do that. And uh, I'll definitely make a separate video about it because it's some pretty crazy capabilities. And now I wanted to add some like uh blue labels and you can see blue doesn't look blue it's all really transparent and opacity is at 100 percent right here right now if you look at the right so this is where i kind of had uh, kind of got that idea what if i have blue or green which i just duplicate a few times well i had that idea a bit later but now i decided just to play around with this green and then apply it to everything i see and I started to apply it to green as well. And I really liked how it looked. So I was like, oh, well, this this looks pretty, pretty intense. It looks pretty cool. So maybe I'll just leave it like that. It's like a, some kind of markings. Yeah, it definitely looks way better with a little color accent like that. It's random and it's, it's pretty cool. Again, could be some kind of color coding for this type of... Um, Oh, plastic holders that they can only put them on a frag grenade, not on a small grenade, stuff like that. And I'm trying just to do this kind of stamp stamps. And I'm trying different materials, just uh, trying to figure out what could work, uh, work nicely on on this orange metal. And essentially, nice, nothing nothing can be done with this orange material. You have just to go and duplicate the layers three times and get it all vibrant and blue. So essentially, just randomly put in these uh, labels and seeing how they look. Okay, I duplicated it and immediately, immediately see that it got more of a color thickness to it. It improved quite a bit. I wonder if I merged those three layers, if I still had the same intensity of the color, but I decided not to do anything about them. And I'm painting out, uh, erasing out the circles, the sides. You can see I got a green splotch on my right side, and this was just like a random splotch. Don't know how I got it, but I, I kept it there because it's just a random dot, and it just adds up really. That doesn't um, it's not a distraction or anything.
And I wanted to add a bit more dirt, I think. Yeah, more of a like active brown dirt around. It's just so cool that you can paint it on like that. Right, and this video is about to be finished. Thank you guys for checking out this grenade process. And uh, there will be uh, uh, will be more videos coming about uh, this type of time lapse with my rambling on top. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and see you next time.